Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. We've got to finish off a few things in this video that I left out of other videos. We're going to risk it for the biscuit, okay? We're headed down to Alice Springs. We're over 300 k's away still, I think about 310 or so. But my fuel says I'm going to be out of fuel in 240 k's. So what do we do? Do we stop and get fuel? No, we don't. We're going to push it past the zero and I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to let you know exactly how many kilometres it, it gets, you know, because I'm not going to run it out unless it runs out. They, that may happen, then I'll be able to give you the absolute, this is how many litres was in there when it said zero, but most likely we're going to get to the pump before it runs out of fuel and we'll be able to let you know how many k's we ran on zero and then, then how many litres it took. So let's see how we go with that. Now, another thing we are talking about in our previous video was uh, about avoiding stone chips in the windscreen, right? So we've got a couple of we've got a couple of gouges, those colourful red rocks on the side of the road, and we've got one that actually must it was a lot smaller. It was like a little tick, and uh, it wasn't a big rock. On the outside layer of glass, there's two layers. The laminates in the middle are on the outside layer. It's hardly even a scratch, but it went through to the inside layer, and it's got one of those. I don't know how to describe it. You know, like a shard or like a like a butterfly wing, you know, the, you know the one I'm talking about anyway, I don't know how to describe it properly, but it's only small, it hasn't spread anywhere, we could get that, the key thing is you've got to keep it clean because it's dirt and stuff that gets in there is what you'll see, if you were to immediately um, repair that, drill it out, fill it and whatever, you'd, you'd look sort of not even see it or hardly see it, the longer it's left like that the more the dirt gets in there and then when you fill it that's what you're looking at the dirt so anyway we've got a guy for that that's another story um, so we'll probably go ahead and do that just to save the windscreen to save waste you know these windscreens are very expensive but what I'm saying about dodging those rocks in the windscreen um, what we do we move left yeah so we talked about that but I didn't go into as much detail you know the point I'm trying to make is the two rocks that hit dead in front of the steering wheel you know I was moving left a little bit but and the one that put the chip it's about four inches from the side from the pillar so had I been another four or five inches left we would have dodged that one now whether we could get another 12 inches out of it to dodge the other two hits possibly but the point is it's usually on that side of the car if you already sort of moved over. So if you're sitting near the line or in the middle of the lane, you're a lot higher risk of getting windscreen damage than you are if you are moved over right over to the left line. And like for example here, on the left side of the line there is rocks, so you wanna be careful. People shouldn't be close behind anyway. They should know what people are gonna do because there's a good, I'll say 18 inches of uh, sealed road, tarred road on the left side of the line that you can use to get away from windscreen damage, but you don't want to be doing that to give windscreen damage to the person behind you, which is why they should know there's no reason to be anywhere near the minimal safe distance. We know the minimum safe distance is one car space for every 15 kilometers an hour. So we're right now, we've got the cruise control set on 123. So how many car spaces for every 15 k's? Any kids watching? Right, six, seven, eight. It's about eight, eight or nine car spaces minimum. Two seconds, right? When you count your two seconds, it isn't one, two. It's mark one, two. Now that's your minimum safe distance. You need to have even more than that out here because you're going to get hit with rocks. Otherwise, it's going to cost your windscreen and possibly other damage. Now, something else I want to include in this video, really important that I haven't talked about, and we're going to do some a video on it in our um, <coughs> Four Before Adventures group. And that's the rear window. There's still people getting rear windows broken on their Prados and other wagons. Now, the way it works is if you're towing a trailer, those rocks that spray off the tires, particularly off the back tires, they hit your caravan or camper or whatever trailer you've got there, and they bounce back and hit the back window and you can't smash it. So when you tow a trailer on dirt roads, that have got rocks bigger than 10 mil, let's say, you know, I mean, any sort of outback dirt road, those big red rocks see there on the side of the road, you want to have your back window covered. So you can do anything as cheap as using cardboard to cover it, taping it on, there's proper rear window protectors you can get. It's probably something Kaon should look into. So next time I speak to them, I'll mention that because that's another good idea. I'm sure they can make something better than whatever's out there. You know, people have got all these rock tamers and different products that go on the back of the vehicle. They're very expensive. They may help.
help protect everything a little bit, absolutely. But there's no way you can rely on a rock not getting through that and bouncing back to your back window. You cannot rely on that. So that's your risk there, your rear window also. So there are a couple of things I wanted to talk about. So keep left, but let the people behind you. If you're in, like in our group, mate, you know, I say, when we've got a single lane road and there's rocks both sides and I see a trick, truck coming, I say, mate, let's get off the road now. You need to get off the road well ahead of that road train, possible road train, because if you don't, well, he might mow you down, but he might go off the road, and that's going to send a whole lot of rock spray, mate, he could get out of control, mate, someone's going to get dead, right? So, when you're on one of the single lane outback roads, single sealed road, even a dirt road for that matter, you see a truck coming, you're not going to see much through that dust on that, you know, those three trailers, whatever, four trailers, whatever it might be, so you got to really consider, look, I get around quick, I can drive, I've got good vehicles, good suspension, but you've got to choose your time and place, okay? There's times where you've got to slow down, you've got to move over. If you're on a dirt road, if everyone wants to be in a hurry, all that's going to happen is everybody's going to get busted up bits and pieces, right? When you've got an oncoming vehicle on a dirt road, you need to slow down. I wish people would move left, okay? There's so many people that seem to drive near the middle of the road or they want to stay in the middle of their lane. This massive big road that's enough, like it's a six lane highway. Look, you know, um, you just got to think about these things, you know. The dirt roads, they can be wide as a six, eight lane highway. And there's, you know, you've got a lane each way and you've got room to have a car space each side even more. And people want to be in the middle of that space. Look, there's some big rocks mixed in that dirt or whatever might be there. And unless you want damage, everybody needs to learn. Slow it down a bit as the vehicle's going past and move left so it give you more clearance in the middle. I always see rocks flying my way from cars, even if there's four car spaces between us. If people do 100 k's, the rocks are flying right across. It's crazy, okay? One of the worst ones, like I said, boat trailers. There's no protection there. They're, they're getting hit by rocks and it bounces straight off the front of the boat, the tinny, whatever it is, straight towards you. If you see a boat coming the other way, I'll tell you what, you better hope they slow down. If they're uh, respectful, they should. But I can tell you, a lot of them don't. A lot of them don't even have mud guards, so they reckon their own boat, they reckon everybody's everything. Okay, what else? Have a look at that scenery up there, eh? Let's just zoom in on that and have a look. Have a look at that for you, right? Might not be too smooth zoomed out. Sorry about that. We are using the quad lock bracket. They're bloody awesome. Hope you like it. We're very happy. We'll do a, re a full review on that soon. But um, on uh, all our videos in the vehicle, all the vehicles have we've got quad locks. But yeah, there's a, you know, all it takes is the slightest the vibration through from the uh, blacktop on the road anyway. But it's all good. We'll enjoy that anyway. And uh, yeah, so Barrow Creek, okay, is a historic telegraph station. You might want to check it out if you're up here, about 300 k's north of Alice Springs, Barrow Creek. Anyway, another thing about that dust and that slowing down, right, not only the, the benefit you get from slowing down, okay, so if you've got any idea, your air filters out on dirt roads, outback trips are going to get absolutely caked. Take a spare or two, okay? Know how to change it and clean it. Be prepared for that. But the other benefit is when you back off, put it in the, the top gear and just take your foot off the gas, your revs drop down. Think about it. The engine, what's it pumping? Air through the engine to run on. So the higher the revs, if you're powering away two, three, three thousand revs, it's going to be using four times more air. So your air filter is going to get four times more dirty than it would be if you backed off and let the revs drop to six, seven, eight, hundred, nine, whatever it's going to come back to idle deceleration speeds, right? So something to think about. Get your foot off the gas before, then they'll see you slowing down, then hopefully they'll slow down. Hopefully this is a message for everyone. We're sort of on the wrong channel. This is the 4 before Diesel channel. We've got 4 before Adventures. You know, if you're into any sort of adventures and you want to see there's a lot of vehicle information on there as well so sometimes it gets a bit mixed up sometimes we upload videos on the wrong channel and then you know what we'll just let it go anyway so this is all good all right so now vehicle damage this is what we talked about in one of the other videos we said you know we'll talk about what happened and what didn't happen well not much happened really so the worst thing that happened uh, let's talk about this one first 2022 uh, nothing really if you saw the video 
event. It may come out before or after this one. This is a bit of a bonus extra one. Today is still Tuesday the 5th, but uh, I was on, in the mood for a bit of talking and to share some info. So um, here we are. I'll put this one out, you know, tomorrow or the next day because I've got the other one that I put out today as a bonus one. Still got your 7 o'clock ones. These are just bonus bonus info, update type videos. But, you know, back on deck, you know, Monday the 11th. But you can get in by texting me this week. We went through that in the previous video. If you missed it, check the video that was released. That'll be today, Tuesday the 5th, at about 8 o'clock, if I remember. There you go. So I've just set myself a goal as a target. Okay, so what else was I going to say? 2020, what happened? You know, a fairly, let's say, a blocked air filter, right? So it's, it's as simple as that. Go on about dusted air boxes and all this crap. Now, Look, it's been going on forever that an engine needs air, believe it or not, right? The engine will suck the inside of the air box out to get the air if it needs to, right? It will pull that air from somewhere. If you've got a dirty air filter, it's pulling dusty air through. That's what's going to happen, right? <coughs> now, it's going to get it through the element, through the air, around the edges, wherever it's going to get it, it's going to get it. So rest assured, that's the situation we had. The engine was pulling air. The air filter was, it was pretty average, okay? It had only done, I'll say, less than a thousand k's of dirt road, but that pool dust stuff that really cakes everything up. And we know at the ends of the air filter the dust comes through. So, worst worst thing that happened here was, so these noisy lines, that's what you use to learn where your tyre is. Can you hear that? Can you guys hear that? Right? But what I'm saying is we've got an extra, I'm going to go 24 inches on the left-hand side of the line there to say, avoid if there was a road train coming, you know what I mean? So, again, just think about it before you do it. Take into account what I said in the other video about not going off the edge, especially at speed, especially towing, blah, blah. It all just adds to the problem factor. Right? So, no problem other than the air filter got blocked. Mitch, any problems with this vehicle, man? Everything was good, wasn't it? Happy days, yeah. So, then we noticed the fuel economy was up, the load was up, the temperature was up. It was all due to the blocked air filter from a few hundred k's of dust. You've got to understand, in a, in a day trip, you can get more dust in your air filter than Toyota had planned in 30,000 k's. So, in dusty conditions, extra maintenance, as per what it says in the book, needs to be completed, right? So that's what needs to happen. We've got a brand new clean air filter now. The MAF sensor's been clean, right? Beautiful, okay? Now, other vehicles, okay? Behind us are Highlands, mate. Happy days, you didn't have any issues whatsoever. It's a Rugged X. Comes out of factory with pretty much everything you need, more or less. Um, his auto electrical setup's very reliable. It's got the angle fridge, very reliable. Other than that, it's a touring vehicle. Um, some other little issues people had. So those circuit breakers, you may have seen a video on that, or if you haven't yet, you might see that. Those little circuit breakers, more mechanicals. They can get moisture in them. I always said avoid them. I'll still say avoid them. Waste of time. You don't need a circuit breaker. A circuit breaker is an emergency item for something like headlights. You can't drive in the dark without headlights out in the nowhere where there's no light, right? So when there's a short or a problem, something's getting hot, it needs to go off and on. Off and on, it calls you. That's what a circuit breaker is for. Otherwise, you just use fuses. That's why manufacturers use fuses. Please use fuses, people. <coughs> right, and then you won't have any problems because someone had a problem with one of those circuit breaker thingies, right? Get rid of them, put fuses in. Um, what other problems? Okay, fridge plugs. People with their cigarette lighter fridge plugs, you know, loose and coming out. There's a number of items that people have in vehicles, fridges, ovens, travel buddy, whatever, and they come with cigarette lighter plugs or whatever. You can order those items with, or change it to whatever plug you want, right? Now, I'm gonna make a suggestion, right? Merit plugs, eh, not bad. They can still get knocked out easier than, you know, Anderson plugs. So if you've got a fridge, just get rid of the cigarette lighter plug. Hardwire it, my fridges are hardwired. They're soldered, right? Soldered, each trick, whatever. Each way, they're not coming undone. Happy days, right? So, <laughs> if you need to be able to take the fridge out, Anderson plug, right? Anderson plug, right? 50 amp Anderson plug, you know? Anderson power products, that's the way to do it. It clips on and it stays there, and that's that. It's not gonna come unplugged accidentally. It can't touch something and short out. It's a really good design, really simple. Anderson plug, okay? I wouldn't worry about the mirror plugs or cigarette lighter adapter plugs or anything other than, you 
know, small products that have that, that you use, that you plug in when you park, yeah, charge your top, or charging something or whatever, but a lot of it these days is USB, so you get rid of that and you just plug your USB in, which is why we've got, in this vehicle, we've got about six or eight USB power outlets between the front and the back of the vehicle, okay? So, I reckon we're about done, because I, I did want to talk about those reliability things, so fridge plugs is the only thing, um, nobody else has had any issues with any mechanicals, no cracked pistons, no wheel bearings collapse, no bearings on the front of the engine uh, collapse, no, uh, you know, uh, you know, no starter motors, no alternators, don't get replaced your alternators and starter motors as prevention. Very rare that they fail, these are Toyotas, they're not old bloody whatevers, you know, let's not name any other brands because people get upset because that's what they've got, but look, they can't, you get the odd one, but you can't predict it. You could, you know, be changing alternators and starters that 99% of them are going to be good for hundreds of thousands of kilometres still. So don't do it. Carry a cheap spare. But if you're going to replace it, don't put a cheap one on the vehicle. Don't spend two or three hundred bucks off eBay and downgrade your genuine Toyota alternator or starter that's going to last forever and put a cheapy on because you want to replace it as prevention. That is just crazy. Oh, and then what? Carry a good one as a spare? No, 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 no. This is what you do, right? See, since I'm in the mood for talking, this is what you do. You buy your eBay special, 200 bucks, $150 starter motor, right? 135 with a five year warranty, yeah, that one. You get that, and then so you get good at it, you go and follow my videos, you disconnect your battery, and you change your starter motor, and you put the Chinese one in there to make sure it works, because sometimes they don't, right? Make sure it works. And guess what else you did? You just got good at changing it. Then, disconnect your battery and take it back out again. You've just done it twice. You got good at it, right? Because you don't want to be doing it on the side of the road. But yeah, that's where you'll be doing it if you want to keep your genuine quality. So then you just carry the spec. That's what we do, okay? When the vehicles get past, say, 100,000 Ks, there's a possibility, one in, not even one in a hundred, probably one in a thousand, that your alternator or starter. The starter's even less chance. There's other things you can do, right? You carry solar panels and a system that allows you to charge your battery off the solar so you can keep driving just like this without an alternator, right? Starter motor. There's not a lot you can do. You can give it a bit of a tap sometimes it works, but again, they're not old Holdens and Fords that they get flogged and you give it a tap because the bushes are worn and you know what I mean, brushes, you know what I mean? They're worn, bushes, brushes, whatever, right? I don't care. Let's call it, let's call bushes and brushes all the same thing to keep it simple. We could be talking about two different things closely related to each other on the same product quite often. Bushes, brushes, we don't give us stuff. We're not going into uh, which one's which in this video. Point is, it's not old Holden Ford, you knock it around, you're probably just going to damage it or break something, sticking your big hammer down there or your big lump of timber, right? So that doesn't usually work, but it can. The other way you can do it is you can rock the vehicle around with it in park because that rocking the transmission into the park ball or the manual, right, manual, you can push start, right? So you don't need a starter motor. That was the other one of the advantages of manual back in the day, right? You can push start the thing or toe start the car, whatever, right? There's ways. So have your solar panels because your alternator is going to be the number one that might go. Get your cheapy, you can carry it as your spare. You probably never need it. If you travel in a group, only one of you needs one. All right, I'm about done talking. I think we covered everything. These vehicles have been very reliable. Of course, that's what they're set up to do. All the aftermarket stuff, nothing's come loose. Nothing's rattled and fallen off. Nothing's leaked, nothing's broken. When we go on trips and I see people with some of the contraptions and aftermarket crap they've got, there's always problems. It's one car, then the next car, then the next car, then the next car. We're running uh, reliable setups, or maybe they're just lucky this time, because that's a possibility as well. One of the vehicles had quite a rattle from uh, near the roof rack area. We couldn't find anything loose. Really loud metal banging, clanging around type metal sound. Um, but you know, that's just annoying. It didn't stop the vehicle. So no reliability issues. Happy days. That's another video. That's two bonus videos that'll come out this week. I don't know what day. With heaps of useful information. Hope you liked it. What could keep saying? Please subscribe and turn the bell on. And when you send me, when you do purchase parts kits from me, please remember to send the vehicle registration number and the kilometres, because um, they're the two things that people often forget. And I'm doing the invoice, and that's what goes on the invoice, the rego and the kilometres for your warranty. Um, it'd be good if it's there when you send me all the details. It is something that's originally asked for on the message. If it's injectors, it says, please send the rego number and kilometres. It says, I may need your VIN number. So you don't need to get me the VIN number. A lot of people worried about sending photos of the VIN number. I will let you know. I don't need the VIN number. If it's one where they change over injectors, I'll say, this is right on the changeover. And even more than VIN number, what's more reliable is 
having a look at the top of the injectors and providing the first two digits. Now, don't everybody go and do this. This is, if I say this is right on the changeover, like if you've got a Hilux built in the middle of 06, or you've got a Hilux built in the middle of about September 09, they're the ones we're going to do some checking. 120s, 150s, Protos, that's all I need to know. Nice and easy, you don't need to go chase the mid numbers. Just rego and kilometres, please, for your warranty. And uh, so we know what's going on. All right, that's it. So I'll just keep, let's just talk forever, wouldn't it? Oh, bless you. Um, keep talking forever, yeah? What else do you do when you're out on these roads? Hope you enjoyed a bit of the scenery. Hope you subscribe. And if you're not, I hope you do it now. Turn the bell on so you don't miss those important announcements as they come out. And like I say, share some of the information with your friends. If you see a good video that you think is relevant to someone you know, a friend, family member, maybe send it across to them so they can start getting themselves educated and stop wasting money and save all the inconvenience and unreliability because reliable trips is what everybody wants. Reliable, economical, and people certainly shouldn't be wasting money, especially in these times of, dare I say, record, I-N-F-L-A-T-I-O-N, right? And on top of and that's all caused by, you know, who running the joint, and then they've got to do things like put I-N-T-E-R-S-T up, right? Okay, that's got to, should have never been there, that's got to go up, but when you combine the the first problem, the second problem, and all the other things that are related to the first problem, everything's up, it is ridiculous, and I don't know how people are going to continue to do it, something big's going to have to happen, and all the best to everybody, I'm trying to help with the part, I can't save the world, but I'm trying to do my part and help you with motor vehicles, genuine help, educating you about vehicles, trying to help you understand what you need, what you don't, blah, 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 I'm out here, thanks for watching and listening, catch up.